Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. It's not uncommon to have a performer in studio who may know his or her part quite well, but when it comes to tracking, they may not be able to perform it quite as tightly as you'd like for the final production. While I'm definitely a proponent for getting things right at the source and doing my best to coach the performer to get the performance that I need out of them, there's definitely a fine line between encouraging your performer and crushing their spirits. No! No, it's terrible! Do it again! Finding the right way to talk to your performers and encourage them to get the performance that you need at the source will set you apart from other producers. Sometimes a little bit of editing will still be needed to tighten up that performance to the level that you'd like. Speaking of which, if you've not checked out my Drum Editing and Reaper course on ProMix Academy, check out the link above. In today's video, we'll be looking at a few different ways that you can edit guitars in Reaper. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a cover of Royals by Lord, as performed by my band A Little Hostile. This is a work in progress, and we're still in the tracking phase as of the recording of this video. Let's take a listen to a part of this chorus as it goes into an interlude. You'll notice as we go into the interlude that for the first half, there's a lot of space between the downstrokes of the guitar. In the second half of the interlude, the left side guitar goes into a bit of a 16th note chug pattern that I'd like to be tighter so that it matches the drums. Let's take a listen in its current state and then edit it to make it tighter. I'll start somewhere around maybe the middle of the preceding chorus. And that performance was not bad, but as I said, the second half of the interlude could definitely stand to be tightened up a bit to make sure that those 16th notes are on point. The drums have already been edited and are pretty well on the grid while still preserving some of that human feel. Let's take a look at that left side guitar. I'll highlight the track and press Shift 1 to expand it. And I'd like to focus on the first half of the interlude where we've got the gaps. I'll increase the height of the second guitar track a little bit more so you can see that as well. And this part has already been edited and is lined up well with the grid. What I'd first like to do is separate the 16th notes from the first part with the more wide open spaces. So I'll move my playhead here and do a split. And now I've got this as its own media item. If we zoom in, it looks like they're fairly close, but not quite close enough, especially if we want those attacks to be pretty much in line with the opposite side guitar. Now one thing I could do is hold Alt on my keyboard and then left click and drag to slip edit this into place. I could cut each one of these and slip edit and move it, but I think that there's a better way. So I'll undo that. And let's take a look at the dynamic split option. To access dynamic split, go to actions, show actions list, and do a search for dynamic split. The default shortcut for this is the letter D on the keyboard. I'll run dynamic split and close my actions list. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but there are vertical lines now on this media item showing where this is proposing a split. I'll move down the timeline a little bit by holding down alt on the keyboard and rolling my mouse wheel up. What I'm wanting to do is make sure that I've caught each of these. And it looks like each transient is caught, but I've also got a few that I don't necessarily want split. We can adjust the sensitivity of the dynamic split by clicking the button in the lower left that says to set transient sensitivity. With transient sensitivity settings brought up, I can now see a horizontal line that shows me where it's going to be looking for those transients to take place. In this dialog, I can adjust the threshold as well as the actual sensitivity, and there's a few more options here that I typically leave at the default setting. What I have checked is display threshold in media items while the window is open, media item selection follows tab to transient, and move by at least one pixel when navigating by transients. Now in this case, I am capturing a little bit of the second transient and I'm primarily wanting to focus just on the first for now. So let's change the threshold a bit and see if we can fine tune this. With a little bit of trial and error, I'm pretty close to what I'd like, but I'd still like to reduce these splits. I've got one more than what I'd like to have. You can see here in the dynamic split items dialog, I have an option for reduce splits, and I'll place a check there. 
and slide this to the right until I get what I want. That's still not quite perfect, so let's undo this for now. And I think I'm comfortable with going ahead and performing a split with these options selected. If we take a look at the lower portion of the dynamic split items, we have options for which actions to perform on the media item. Our options are split selected items, split selected and grouped items, add stretch markers to selected items, add stretch markers to selected items and grouped items, or add transient guide markers to selected items. In this case, I'd like the default setting of split selected items, and I've also got the option checked to add a snap offset to peak value. What this will do is move the snap offset of each new media item to the beginning of the transient as opposed to the beginning of the media item. If you're not familiar with snap offset, click the link above for more info. I would like to add a leading pad of about 10 milliseconds and a trailing pad of about 10 milliseconds as well. With my options set, I can now click split and you can see that our media item is now split on each of the transients. The snap offset has been moved to what it believes to be the beginning of the transient. And this may or may not be accurate depending on the settings that I put in. At this point, with my media item still selected, I can press Q to quantize. Now you'll notice that I've got my grid set to 16th notes and my quantize is going to be based on whatever my grid is currently set to. That did leave a bit of a gap between some of these items, but we can fix this by grabbing the left edge of an item and dragging it slightly to the left to create a crossfade. Let's take a listen and see how this sounds. It looks like we may have a glitch here that needs to be fixed. So we'll go ahead and correct that now by just drawing that out. And now let's take a listen. That sounds a lot better to my ear. It looks a little bit strange when we see these gaps, but it seems to have done the trick. Let's undo that and try a different method. Now we're back to our original item. I'll close my transient detection settings. And in this particular case, since we've got a lot of space between these sections, we can try to remove the silence and then quantize. I'll go to Actions, Show Action List, and search for Silence. The action I'd like to run is Item Auto Trim Split Items Remove Silence. I'll run and close. And you can see that we have threshold settings here similar to what we had in the transient sensitivity settings. Other options in the dialog are to ignore silence shorter than your specified time limit, make non-silent clips no shorter than a certain time limit, we can add a leading and a trailing pad of the desired length plus fade the pad, and we have an option to automatically adjust the snap offset to peak value in the first x milliseconds. I'll set that to 5 milliseconds. And then we have our mode. Our mode options are trim and remove silent areas, split and keep silent areas, split only before non-silence, and split only before silence. For this operation, I'd like to use split and remove silent areas. We have further options below the mode selection. There's split grouped items at times of selected item splits, preserve timing of non-silent areas, and run signal through effects for detection. I've only got the preserved timing of non-silent areas checkmarked, and I'll click Process and see what happens. Now we've only got our transients, and I'll highlight each of these, and once again press Q to quantize. Now let's take a listen. Looks like I missed the last two, I'll grab those and quantize them as well. And let's grab each of these and extend the, their length just a little bit so that they've got more of a natural fade out. Now let's try. That's sounding pretty good to my ears. Now let's move on to the 16th notes. For the 16th note chugs, let's try one other option. I'll highlight the media item and press D to bring up my dynamic split option. We'll need to adjust the transient sensitivity since this is a little bit quieter in the beginning phases and lower the threshold until we get the notes that we want. I've adjusted my sensitivity and threshold so that I capture the 16th notes, but it looks like I've got a bit of a mess once I get towards the end here and the transient gets stronger. To correct that, I'll go ahead and place a split here so that my earlier part is separate from my latter part and I can set a different transient sensitivity for each section. 
Going back to the first part, everything looks like it's captured pretty much the way that I'd like it. Looks like I may have missed one transient there, so let's adjust the threshold a bit more. And that looks to have everything the way that I'd like. I'll close my transient detection settings, and this time instead of splitting the selected items, I'd like to add stretch markers to the selected items. I'll click the button below to add my stretch markers, and you can see that a stretch marker has been placed at each of the transients. To process this, I'll right-click the media item, go to Stretch Markers, Stretch Markers in Selected Items, and Snap to Grid. Once again, my grid is set to 16th note, so the snapping is based strictly on my grid setting. Let's take a listen to this and see if these 16th notes line up. And that sounds pretty good to my ear. Let's check it one more time with the metronome engaged. As you could hear with that metronome engaged, the guitar now lines up perfectly, but it still sounds human and I didn't hear any artifacts from the stretch markers. Now I just need to make some edits to that last portion using whichever method is appropriate and we're finished. As you can see, there's several options in Reaper to make short work of your guitar editing and improve a performance that may not be as tight as you'd like. While I definitely recommend getting it right at the source as often as possible, there's definitely nothing wrong with utilizing the tools at your fingertips to get the performance that you need. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, I Like Coffee, Patreon, or Super Thanks links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. outside and you're still drinking coffee.